Hi guys, this is Paul. We're continuing our coverage here at Storage Visions 2014. Right now we're sitting down with Philip Lopresti. He is the president and CEO of Everspin, and Everspin Technologies creates MRAM solutions. So if you could start off, just first kind of explain to our viewers the difference between MRAM and DRAM, the, the major difference. They're both types of memory. Okay, well the primary difference uh, between MRAM and DRAM is MRAM is a non-volatile memory, where DRAM is a volatile memory, you have to refresh it. So fundamentally, um, besides that, our new technology in MRAM has the same uh, bandwidth as DRAM, uh, the same latencies as DRAM. However, it's non-volatile. So just imagine having DRAM that's non-volatile. Yeah, so if you lose power, your, your data is still there when you power back up, correct? Correct. So, you know, some of the best applications for our technology are data buffers or caches for SSDs, let's say, uh, where you want to write data in, but you want it protected when power goes out. Absolutely. Um, and, of course, if you're writing to media, whether it's spinning media or it's SS, a hard drive, um, you know, from NAND, the, the write's slow. Um, and you want to be able to protect that uh, during that cycle. So MRAM instantly basically retains the data for you. And there was a recent announcement that you you guys are implementing some MRAM technology into a Buffalo Buffalo SSDs, is that correct? That's correct, yep. And one of the great things about using MRAM in place of DRAM is it's going to remove some of the complexity that is required for power capacitors and things of that nature. Firmware, it simplifies firmware because you're not, you don't have to be as concerned about about your, your power down rights. Now, I think it's safe to say everybody knows MRAM is the way of the future. Uh, we see a lot of companies spending billions of dollars right now, the big guys, spending billions of dollars in research to develop this product, but really, who is making MRAM right now other than you? Um, that's it, Everspin's the only company today that's in full production with MRAM. Our first generation technology's been in production for about five years. Uh, we've shipped over 12 million units, uh, primarily into the enterprise storage market space, but also industrial, automotive, um, and other transportation areas. It's very reliable. It's uh, today's parts in production are SRAM interfaces, but our new parts that are coming into production today are DRAM interface. So now we're pursuing persistent DRAM applications. These are areas where you want non-volatile DRAM, and to get that today, you need a super cap or battery. You need firmware, as you mentioned. Absolutely. You need an elaborate system to protect on power down. And basically, with MRAM, you can now create a non-volatile DIM solution or a non-volatile cache that doesn't need to be backed up with a battery or a super cap. And so, you, there's already some penetration into this market by you guys. Surprisingly, you know, it, you, LLSI is already using MDMI controllers. We, the aforementioned Buffalo SSD that's that's going around. I think one of the keys to widespread adoption of this is going to be the exponential increase in density. How are you guys progressing for density for MRAM right now? So uh, what we have in production today with the first generation uh, is more of an SRAM interface, so it goes up to 16 megabits. Um, our first generation DDR3 part is a 64 mega, megabit device, and we plan on scaling that up to a gigabit within the next couple of years. And what do you feel is the inflection point right now for widespread use because eventually MRAM is going to be in everything from our cellular phones to laptops to powerful servers and supercomputers. What do you think, what, what point do we need to reach to see that type of that type of penetration? Well, uh, our feeling at Everspin is at about the one gigabit density range, it's probably a pretty ideal space, uh, area for storage applications. Um, and I'm, we're talking about caches and buffers. One gigabit to four gigabit, I think you can cover. Um, you know, our analysis is about a two billion to five billion dollar market opportunity in wow. these caches. Um, however, if you want to get into like mobile phones or into servers or into laptops or whatever that you know, system's going to be, you probably need to go into higher densities and that's you know approaching more like 8 gig, 16 gig. Um, and those technologies are a little further out, but Everspin's focused right now on delivering solutions for storage applications. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we feel comfortable that even at one gigabit, the market opportunity is quite significant. Excellent. And 
and a lot of people design products but don't actually build them. You guys actually build and have your own fab, correct? Yeah, one of our big advantages is we've been in production, as I highlighted earlier, for you know about five and a half years. Um, we have a facility that allows us to do R&D. So obviously, MRAM is a new technology, and uh, there's a lot of work that you have to do. And that work uh, requires a lot of cycles of learning. And by having our own fab, uh, we have the access to that fab to turn, turn silicon quite frequently, and we can learn a lot, and we can come out with new technology sooner. So that is going to increase your time to market and really gives you all of the flexibility that you need. Correct? Yeah, essentially it's allowed us to launch the first generation, go in production. We reliably ship you know, over 12 million units of standalone memory, uh, over 20 million embedded memories. Uh, but now it's allowed us to get to the first uh, sampling of a 64 megabit spin torque part. Awesome. So you guys are moving into spin torque. Can you tell us a little, a little about that? Yeah, so spin torque allows us to now go to higher densities. It's a lower current consuming technology and fundamentally allows us to scale the uh, MRAM bit. Uh, so obviously, if you could scale the MRAM bit, you could take advantage of smaller geometries. And by doing that, you can put more bits on a, on a piece of silicon and thus increase density. Excellent. Well, it sounds like things are moving well for you. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for been, it's been great. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by the booth. Thanks. It's nice to talk to you, Paul.